Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, we're going to be doing a follow-up to a video that I did last week on this channel on Microsoft Plus for Kids. Now if you guys haven't seen that video, I'd highly recommend that you go and check it out up in the cards right now so you'll kind of be up to speed on what this program is and what we're going to be trying to do here in today's video. And that's because in today's video, we're going to be trying to run this piece of software from 1997 on the latest version of Windows 10. And we're gonna see how Windows 10 handles it, if it's even capable of running the software, and uh, what programs will open up and see if there's any programs that actually will break and not open up. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into it and get started. So I've got the uh, ISO file mounted in this Windows 10 VM right here. We're gonna try to run setup.exe and see if it actually works. And it looks like it does, check that out. So Plus for Kids Setup, welcome to the Plus for Kids installation program. And we're going to, just like we did in the last video, go with the custom installer so that we can check everything. And you can see we've actually got a couple of items missing from the custom installation menu. So we are missing two items from here, and that is Protect It, which was the uh, parental controls program, and the desktop themes. Now, those missing from here probably has to do with the fact that, I mean, I know that Protect It, the way it was designed and the way that it modified the login prompt, it was kind of designed really for Windows 95 specifically. So since we're running a newer version of Windows, it's probably just not showing it in here because it's literally not going to be compatible with the uh, Windows 10 uh, login process. So we're just going to select all of these, click on continue here. So it actually finished the installation, so that is awesome. We'll click on OK. All right, so it appears that uh, Microsoft Plus for Kids has actually not created any shortcuts in the start menu. If we scroll down here to the M folder, you can see there's nothing in here. Uh, we can scroll down to the W uh, category and you can see that we've got yeah all of our standard items in here but under windows accessories there's nothing new but that is not a problem for us because we can just open up file explorer go to the c drive and under program files x86 we should now have a new folder called microsoft kids as you can see right here and if we go in here we can go into plus for kids and we've got our applications that we can actually launch so that is again play it talk it and then i believe there is it might be actually back here in common files there's painted in here and there is the paint program so let's go ahead and actually start with that we're going to launch the paint program and it looks like it actually launches so that is pretty awesome we go ahead and make this window a little bit larger here and we'll see if the sounds still work and it looks like it does so the sounds actually do work so that's actually pretty cool this program ran uh, without any issues we didn't even have to apply a, a compatibility layer by going into the properties menu. you didn't have to do any of that and uh, yeah it appears that yeah all of the uh, sounds are here so that's pretty cool we can go ahead and uh, use the bucket tool maybe want to get like a blue background here so you want to erase everything well, I'm pleased to say that this program uh, appears to be fully functional. We can go to help and about here, and uh, you can see this is Microsoft Paint at version 1.0, 1981 and 1996, Microsoft Corporation. Um, yeah, so fully functional paint program. That is pretty awesome that it actually works. We'll go ahead and quit out of this, and we will not save our changes. Uh, next up, let's go back into the Microsoft Kids folder and then into Plus for Kids and take a look at Play It. This is, once again, the uh, music program, and it's, it's going to come up with that same message that says, before you get started, would you like Play It to help you set up your sound card or MIDI instruments? We'll say yes. And yeah, check that out. It actually does work. Uh, slight issue though, you may notice there is a bit of a delay when I go ahead and press a key and uh, the time that, the, that it takes the sound to actually play. So there's a slight bit of a delay there. You can see like how long that I have to have this pressed down for it to actually play. And it's the exact same thing when you actually use your mouse to click on the keys. You can see there's a bit of a delay. That obviously did not happen in uh, you know running this under Windows 95. But we can again change the uh, style. I mean, and like I said, I kind of go into a lot more detail on these programs in that previous video. So if you want to learn more kind of about what these programs did, how they actually worked, I'd recommend you go and check out that video. This video is really just a proof of concept to see if we can actually get these programs to work here on Windows 10. And so far, it's been pretty successful. So yeah, even some of these different uh, styles actually do play, which I wouldn't really expect there to be like an issue there. Uh, we can make a recording if we want to. So let's... And yeah, it is kind of 
hard to do this because it's like everything is like so delayed. So when I'm like pressing down on a key, I mean like that was me tapping a key and you can see the sound barely plays. It plays for like a split second in the background. So it actually makes it quite difficult to like record like an actual song on this, but we'll go ahead and just stop it. Uh, and we can actually play back the recording. which obviously does play back totally fine. We can save the song file if we want to. Yeah, I'm honestly pretty impressed, guys. We've had no issues with both of these programs so far. Uh, the last one we have installed is Talkit, which is, again, the text-to-speech program. Uh, this one's also pretty cool. Uh, so we can actually, let's just do what we did last time and type out my intro here. So we can have uh, the man voice say it. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. You can see it actually slightly cuts off. I wonder if that's because of the exclamation point. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So yeah, it does actually work once again with no, no issues at all. We can go to help and about. Um, this is again version 1.0, Microsoft Talkit. The about window opens up totally fine. Let's go to system info and see. Okay, so it just opens up system information. Yeah, once again, very, very impressed. Pretty awesome. We were actually able to get this one to work. That is all of the programs that Plus for Kids installed. Um, actually, we do have, I totally forgot to mention, um, under under common files, paint it, there is the um, paint it. Uh, picker tool which i believe is is possibly stored in another yeah it's this, it's this one right here under media gallery uh p-i-c-t pick.exe so this is this program that allows you to select a uh, sample image from all, all these different uh categories that they have let's go with uh let's go with everyday things and let's get this cookie right here so we can uh select this copy it and then uh oh it actually so this one actually comes up and says media gallery had trouble loading the picture and it crashes so can we paste it in here so we can still paste it in here um into the paint program but it appears that the actual program itself when you clicked on this and clicked on copy it actually crashes but I can still paste it. So it will actually copy it to the clipboard, but it will just crash immediately after doing that, which is not what it did in uh, Windows 95. So all of the programs that Plus installs on the system do actually work. But what I also want to do is jump back into the CD and let's see if we can actually run the auto run. Uh, yeah, auto run.exe. So we're going to actually open this up. And this is the same auto run program that gave us access to Internet Explorer 3.01 and fun stuff. So we're going to try IE 3.01 and see if it. Uh, oh, wow, it's actually coming up with the installer. So we'll click yes. Uh, yes. Would you like to select which optional Internet components are installed? Sure. Internet mail, Internet news. Sounds good. We'll click OK. And, uh, okay, so it comes up with an error saying Internet Explorer 3.0 cannot be installed on a system that has Internet Explorer 4.0 installed. Well, hold on a second, because I actually went ahead and went into Program Files and Program Files x86 and actually renamed both of the Internet Explorer folders to just A. And now the installer is actually getting past that and it's asking us where you want to install Internet Explorer 2. We'll just say C Program Files x86. And okay, now it does the exact same thing. So it says it cannot be installed on the system that has 4.0 installed. Um, let's see if we can manually specify a different directory. Let's do other location. And let's just do it to the desktop. And okay, it does the it does the exact same thing. Um, so that was that was worth a try, but it's still able to detect that we have a newer version of Internet Explorer installed. What I'm mainly interested in in this auto run program is under the fun stuff folder. I want to see if we can well, we'll we'll start with the web links again and see if it actually creates those shortcuts, which it does. Both those links are dead, by the way. Uh, Surfwatch, we could try that out and see if we can actually run this. This is again kind of the parental controls program for Internet Explorer. Uh, and you see it comes up with a message right away that says Surfwatch setup has detected that you're not running Windows 95. This is the Windows 95 version of Surfwatch. Uh, let's see if we can bypass that by going into uh, Surfwatch Win95 and then running the setup as a administrator in compatibility mode. So let's set this for compatibility mode for Windows 95. And let's see if we can uh, get past that message, which looks like it does. So we'll click on continue. We'll accept the agreement. We will click on OK. We'll enter our name here. We'll just put MJD. So it actually tries to load an unsupported 16 bits application. And this is a uh, surfu.exe cannot start. So that's apparently a 16 bit program, which obviously 64 bit Windows does not support. So we can try 
Um, well, it says it actually installed. We'll click on restart now. Uh, but we can try to run that executable using OTVDM. So yeah, like I thought, actually opening up Surfwatch with OTVDM actually worked. So we can go ahead and, and accept the agreement. And then it's going to ask you about registering, which uh, we don't actually... Oh, we have like a trial serial number. So we'll just put in our name here. Click OK. And it says, in order for Surfwatch to update your site database, you'll need to be connected to the internet. Please connect your computer to the internet and then click connected, which we are. And obviously, just like in the last video, this is going to fail because it's not going to be able to retrieve anything because the web server that hosted all this stuff is not existent anymore. So it just basically says that because you like have to run this updater for the program to actually work. Uh, so it's just going to keep coming up and saying, OK, next time Windows starts, we'll like try to update it. But it's obviously going to fail like indefinitely. So I also want to go and take a look at the demos, which is what we did last time. And it looks like the demos is a 16-bit program as well. So this right here is the file that it actually tries to open up. So what we can do is open up the OTVDM folder and we can run kids SMPLR with OTVDM. And it actually does open up. It performs the temporary installation. It did not actually show this window under Windows 95. Now, this is actually pretty interesting. You guys, if you saw my um, IBM OS2 workplace shell on Windows 10 video, that'll be up in the cards if you want to check that out. The program actually applied the like OS2 like purplish color scheme. And you can see that's actually taking effect here since this is a 16-bit program. So it's actually opening up uh, with that same color scheme that that program set, which is pretty cool. Now, it's worth noting that when I ran this under Windows 95, this this did not come up. I assume that it did, but it just finished this process quickly enough that I did not actually get a chance to see the window, but it looks like it's actually frozen here. And yeah, OTVDM is not responding. So, so it looks like it's just going to come up with this just saying performing temporary installation is going to freeze there. Well, what I mainly want to take a look at are the two uh, Movie Maker programs. So that was the uh, Nickelodeon 3D Movie Maker and the Microsoft 3D Movie Maker. We'll start with the Nick 3D one. Uh, and let's see if we can run this. So this is not a 16 bit program, but it does say it cannot copy nickdemo.exe. So it could be that running it as an administrator. Uh, oh, now it actually just completely fails. There's a problem starting setup x.dll. And it still comes up and says finished to start programs, Microsoft Kids, and then click Nickelodeon 3D Movie Maker. So let's try that. No, it does not look like there's a Microsoft Kids folder. We could look in the C drive program files. Microsoft Kids, um, it's not under Common Files, it's not under, is it under Plus for Kids? And no, it's not in here at all. So that's actually kind of unfortunate um, because, yeah, it just says there's a problem starting setup x.dll. The specified module could not be found. We've got the other Movie Maker program in here, so we can, let's open this here. And that does the exact same thing, even without running it as a, an admin. We can run this as an administrator setup x.dll we do have a couple of other executables though like the atlas program which was the uh, encarta encyclopedia world atlas that one does actually launch uh this bus game is the uh, magic school bus game this might actually be a 16-bit file so we could possibly run this with a uh, otvdm and okay it is a 16-bit application but it's, it's trying to find another dll file that it cannot find which is interesting oh you know what that's because when you go in and try to run the demos program uh the actual kid sampler executable when it runs it extracts temporary files that all of these other executables need and if you remember it wasn't able to do that um because again when you try to run um the kids sampler program with otvdm which is what you have to do uh it just comes up and it says you know, performing temporary installation, but the program just crashes. So that is the reason why we weren't able to, like for the Nick 3D Movie Maker, the regular Movie Maker, we weren't able to get any of these working. Uh, I mean, we can try some of these other files, but I guarantee you they're gonna do like the exact same thing. So yeah, this executable, which is the Magic School Bus Trial, which is this msbdemos.exe. This one actually, it did not give us any errors about trying to find specific files. Uh, but when I clicked on play a game here, the program is actually kind of having a little bit of trouble uh, continuing. Uh, it's doing the exact same thing that the, uh, you know, regular, like the main executable when it was trying to extract those files. Uh, it literally just kind of freezes up here. We'll go ahead and leave it running in the background though to see if it, uh, you know, recovers from that. But uh, we can try the Encarta demo. This one does actually open up, although this is 
the same like it's it's very similar to the atlas and then it just basically plays a video just kind of telling you about encarta 97 and microsoft creative writer also actually opens up this installation program does open up although it looks like it does the exact same thing and this is not even a 16-bit application this is a win32 application oh never mind there we go so it actually recovered there so we will install the creative writer 2 trial version yeah this was one of the programs that we uh that we took a look at back in the original video creative writer trial there it is and there is our cw2trial.exe. Um, so yeah, the setup tool, we can just leave this responding. I do want to actually go ahead and end all these other applications that are not responding um, because I, I, I did try to off camera run a bunch of the other executables to see if they would actually work and uh, they all, well, gave us error saying that, you know, it could not find a specific file that it was looking for. Um, the creative writer setup looks to have actually recovered here, so we will click on OK. Um, let's see if it actually installed to the start menu. All those other ones didn't. So it's saying it should be in a Microsoft, yeah, which there, there's still no Microsoft Kids folder there. Uh, we can obviously just go directly into um, the folder here and run this. Let's see if we can run this without any compatibility uh, filters. It looks like we can. So here is Creative Writer 2.0 opening up. And this is again a demo version of this program. So it again does not have the like full functionality of it. Um, and even when you try to maximize the window, it does not maximize like and take up the entire screen. It only takes up like a portion of the screen, kind of similar to how um, earlier versions of Command Prompt work on Windows. And so this is basically a word processor that has been made a little more entertaining to use for children. So instead of having like uh, a menu bar with, you know, file, edit, view, all those different menus, um, you don't have any of that. You have a bunch of icons. You have this uh, nice background here. Um, and basically everything takes the form of icons and there are also sound effects as you can hear in the background And so yeah, there are a lot of uh, things that you can do with this program again I do go uh, more in depth in this program and with all the other programs in that original video One of the things that you can't do which is actually kind of funny is you cannot save anything when you close out of it I mean there, there's no save option in the program, but when you close out of it It just says that you know, thanks for using creative writer um, you can get a rebate offer of $10 if you buy it with uh, 3D Movie Maker or Nickelodeon 3D Movie Maker. Click OK and it actually closes out. So for you to actually save your work, you would have to do your work in that program and then print, like physically print your uh, document out on a piece of paper. That's the way that you would basically save your work. So if you didn't have a printer, uh, well, you'd have to buy the, the full program to actually, you know, utilize it. But there you have it, guys. I am very impressed. We were actually able to get a couple of these programs included with Microsoft Plus for Kids uh, to actually work here on the latest version of Windows 10, which is pretty awesome. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed this little look back at this uh, piece of software from 1997, um, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and uh, turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload a new video, which I do multiple times per week here on this channel. Uh, also, be sure to drop me a comment, guys, uh, if you have any thoughts or suggestions about this video or for future videos, things you'd like to see uh, on this channel. Be sure to let me know, as I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.